by the county women representatives, so 47 of them. And then we also looked at the Senate Oversight Fund. D, which was a fourth agenda item, was establishment of state offices. And this actually came from the Kenya Kwanzaa side. Number one, the office of the leader of the official position. And number two, the office of the prime cabinet secretary. We all recognize that in order to touch this matter, you do need a referendum. Whatever arrangements then need to be done at the present moment can only be seen to be temporary while the country awaits uh, to go to uh, the necessary referendum at the opportune time. And the number five agenda item, which was key, and I think most relevant during this political parties festival, and I really like the word festival, because in a festival, when you enjoy it, in a festival you do your own thing. The children were dancing for us. Kumbi, you can have actually a political party festival. Next time, and I've seen the big show by the political parties. They were actually pulling me, come and sign our book and do whatever. And then I say to myself, hey, I didn't sign the order, maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> if they put up a big show. If they get their act together. But I went and signed uh, my friend with us, uh, Port Kenya, in the hope you will not wind it up. I signed the NC to send a signal to my friend Mudabadi as then Oka. Say you made a mistake, you don't get swallowed up by Uda. But happy, there's still people there. Therefore, fidelity to political parties and coalitions and the law on multi party democracy. And specifically dealing with the issue of preventing interference with political parties. What has been happening to Jubilee? I went and signed with, with passion the book for Jubilee. Because I was by so doing, along with my brother Eugene, sending a signal, you will not kill Jubilee. It's a political party in this country and stop interfering. The party belongs to its members. It cannot belong to an individual. So we dealt with this matter extensively and made recommendation, including amending Article, I think, 103 or is it of the Constitution, where if you jump from one political party to go to another one, uh, using political parties as vehicles, first of all, it means you have no ideology, and what I refer to political uh, ideology in coherence, and then you use it as a, as a stepping stone, you are the wrong type of a leader. The children have just been telling us here that they look at politicians as liars. Hey, people who are just uh, led by what is in their own interest. They don't care about anybody else's interest. Had we played fidelity to a political party's arrangement, we are clear in our minds that Azimio La Moja, one Kenya coalition would be the majority in parliament. But Kimani came here and decided and talked about at, about it as a leader, yeah. So the, these are some of the issues that we had to deal with. After three months of difficult negotiations, Nadiko submitted his report on November 29, 2023. As I previously mentioned, after the anticipated initial friction and mistrust, the parties gelled and collaborated efficiently. Trust returned to our ranks. And we demonstrate a strong sense of commitment to peace and reconciliation in our country. We have no other way but to actually talk to each other. Because we don't talk to each other, talk, talk with each other. We end up talking to each other. We end up fighting each other. And that is clearly not in the spirit, in the best spirit of our supreme law in the land, Constitution 2010. So I stated that uh, this report was only the beginning as it includes flaws or certain things and was also incomplete as we agreed to disagree on the most important issue, most important matter to us as uh, Azimio La Moja One Coalition. The core of the relationship between the Azimio Coalition and the Kenya Kwanzaa administration and indeed the people of Kenya has in my opinion been damaged by the continued rise in the cost of living. That was to us the most important issue. The Finance Act of 2023 in increases in taxation, adding to the hardships already forced 
faced by the majority of our people. Furthermore, recently the Interior Ministry's uh, instruction to introduce increased taxes, fees, and levies on services provided by the State Department of Immigration and Citizen Services, including obtaining a national identity card. Now you have to pay so much. And this is an entitlement to every Kenyan. Your ID is the most basic document. How do you go and pay for it? This does demonstrate an administration that is out of touch with the realities on the ground. People are suffering. Even the children here, released by their parents to come and listen to us, they look at us as a bunch of liars who say one thing today, once they are office, they do their other things. Ladies and gentlemen, Today, I've chosen to be very, very moderate. <laughs> I don't want to annoy you beyond what you can bear. But I have outlined an example of collaboration between political rivals to implement governance changes and promote economic and social progress. There are both improvements and drawbacks. I'm, look for, for, I'm looking forward to hearing from our panel and other professionals there today about how best we can promote our mutual agenda. I conclude by asking all of us, those sitting and others listening via various links, that we must not lose hope. We must not lose hope. We must keep hope alive because we have no option. One young Kenyan asked me, what, what, is, what, what does umbrella stand for? Oh, I was so happy to explain. Because imagine a situation where we are all, but that is Wiper's, Wiper Democratic Party's uh, uh, symbol. All our candidates have to go carrying out umbrellas. But now, I think a time has come where I don't mind, as a party leader Wiper, donating the umbrella to this country. Because at the end of the day, we are all under one umbrella called Kenya. It has never been as relevant as it is today. There is very much we can do. There is much we can do together for our beloved nation, Kenya. And I remain, my speech writer had, had, uh, had written, I remain eternally optimistic. <laughs> I deleted the word eternally. <laughs> I remain optimistic that we are in the right place at the right time. Hashtag Hakika Titaweza. Hakika Titaweza. And as we say in our uh, Azimio parlance, not only Hakika Itawezekana, lakini Inawezekana. Sema Inawezekana. God bless you and God bless our country, Ken. Thank you. questions. I know you've been uh, gone through all this, but uh, we have always thought of you as the gentleman of Kenyan politics. Uh, that, that phrase was used uh, to Mwai Kibaki and more so to you, Daktari. What is it uh, about your personality that has described you as a gentleman and how have you been able to navigate the tricky waters of politics and still been able to hold your character as a gentleman in Kenyan politics? I thank you for your very kind remarks. It's as if I knew you were going to say that. So I said I'm going to moderate my speech today. Um, but you could be described as a gentleman of the Kenyan politics, unfortunate as a weakness. If people looked at it positively, then I don't mind that designation. But what choice does one have? But to be a gentleman, or if you're a lady, to be a lady, 
a lady gentleman, <laughs> Shakila, a lady, yeah, genteel. We, a time comes, as one, the late Professor George Saitoti once said, a time may come <laughs> when you have to lay aside that. For example, what does it benefit anybody to tear gas doctors? Do you realize if you hurt a doctor, you hit him with a tear gas? And I was nearly killed myself during the demonstrations in Madare. And, and Eugene, as, it, as fate would have it, was actually with me in that, in that very unfortunate thing. When a tear gas canister was locked at my car, broke the rear windscreen, and I did hit my head, we would have had a different story. Even that, we're almost dead. How well Eugene escaped into the crowd, I don't know. But I remember, I didn't know that Coca-Cola can actually be very good when you are tear gas. Young people top out a lot of Coca-Cola. I was literally uh, half dazed. I was dazed. Uh, the gentleman of the Kenyan politics was almost dead. A time comes. And look at what happened to Raila Odinga. Seven bullets, bullets we witnessed when eventually we escaped from the pipeline encounter. That was a war zone. You'd have thought Kenya is like Gaza. <laughs> it was terrible. So, oh, Haiti. Oh my goodness, Haiti. My Kenyans are very good on social media. Mengina Zemba to Kipeleka Watu Uko, Unatua the letter H, Unaweka M. We hope that will not be the case. I must say, we hope our people will not die. But as, of course, your forces as Miola Maja and Kenya to that unfortunate thing. We wish the people of Haiti well. But they must be helped in a manner that is also humane, that first of all, we might recognize the solution to the Haiti crisis will come from a Haiti people themselves. This has always been my mantra when we're dealing with the Somalia. The Somalis in their many communities, whether they are Darots, Awee, Digli, Merifle, and all of them, the point five, we knew they had to come up with a solution to their problem. And today, as I say, Somalia has joined the East African community. So if you think you can go and impose order in Haiti, we can only be deluding ourselves. Where others are there, we think we can send our young people there. We remain opposed on principle. Uh, but having said that, the gentleman, thank you. Thank you for thinking I am. After those comments, are you still convinced? I am I'm convinced more than ever. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe if we could just ask a second question. Uh, we understand, of course, that you're a lawyer of many years' uh, uh, experience in the profession, and you've always spoken about fidelity to the rule of law. How, what informed this to be your guiding principle or your mantra in every matter that comes to politics? Because again, uh, similar to the first question, the rule of law and politics do not always go hand in hand or in the same direction. But how have you been able to navigate these two guiding principles in your long and illustrious political career? Thank you. As a lawyer, I firmly believe that I think this country should try a lawyer president. Not necessarily. Amen. Because, you know, what we are seeing now, clawing back on the devolution, as, as uh, Eugene has just said, pointed out, he was the last devolution minister. And the thing is written in black and white under Constitution 2010. I believe myself the biggest gift late President Kibaki bequeathed to our nation was Constitution 2010. Him being a gentleman, but I think it was that man that was able to make him tolerate all manner of criticism and deliver Constitution 2010. That is our supreme law, the supreme law of our country. And nobody, whether in opposition or in government, is really allowed to deviate from that. And remember the instances, and that's why a famous judge, English judge, called Lord Deming, delivered a dictum, yeah, where he said, justice delayed is justice denied. We must have justice. We have delayed justice in this country for far too long. And that's why some of us cannot just sit by and allow the country to go to the dogs. Therefore, I'm a stickler for the rule of law. 
involved, some of you may have read in literature classes a book called uh, by Thomas More, A Man for All Seasons. And the Attorney General that time said, when it comes to the practice of law, he is a forester. A forester in the thickets of the law becomes a forester. So, I want to commend the rule of law. This is why even in my remarks, the IMF itself gave primacy of place 